So poor Cindy Lou, her eyes full of tears, and her little who head wise beyond her ears, stole a glance at the time and to herself said, I should have some water and then go to bed. And off she went, down the living room stairs, rubbing sleep from her eyes, fully unaware that the Grinchy Claws had come to his final stop in his wonderful, awful, Christmas-stealing plot. She didn't see him, that Cindy Lou Who, until the final step touched her little pink shoe. She couldn't help but stare at that strange thing to see. Santa Claus shoving their tree up the chimney. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny Who daughter, who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus? Why, why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. He watched her climb, kept his clawsy expression, but she suddenly stopped to ask him a question. Santa? She started, her voice laced with doubt. Could you tell me what Christmas is really about? And the Grinch's facade crumbled and tore because she'd asked him a thing he'd never thought of before. And he thought for a moment to make something up. And then he gave her a very unsanta-like shrug. And although the Grinch did not really know, he told her... Uh, presents? I suppose. And then he waited for the child to respond. But Cindy Lou Who just kept walking on. And the Grinch could not fathom why, but he thought Cindy Lou had started to cry. But nevertheless, she kept on with her cup. And when she'd gone to her room, he stuffed the tree up. And the last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. It was a quarter past dawn. All the Who's still a bed. All the Who's still a snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings, 3,000 feet up to his home on Mount Crumpet. He rode with a load to the tip top to dump it. And all the way up, he was grinchously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry, Boo-hoo! That's a noise that I simply must hear. <laughs> and so the Grinch paused put a hand to his ear, and he heard a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. And there Grinch stood, puzzling and puzzling, for somehow he hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. He puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he raced down Mount Crumpet in the bright morning light. He brought back the toys, the food for their feast, and he, he himself, carved the roast beast. And Cindy Lou Who, her tears now long dried, looked at the Grinch with her eyes full of pride. For the Grinch who stole Christmas gave it back to the Who's. So perhaps there was hope for Cindy Lou too. For on that day that comes once a year, 
all the who's gathered round, the who's they hold dear. And although they love rapping and bows beyond measure, what they loved most of all was just being together.